Hello everyone. Um, welcome to the fourth webinar in the uh, in the series. Uh, so earlier in this series, uh, we have uh, done um, three webinars. The first one uh, on Azure fundamentals. The second one on Azure AI. The third one on uh, uh, benefits of GitHub. And the fourth one uh, today uh, is on Power Platform. Uh, and uh, our speaker is uh, Renu. Uh, so Renu is uh, a soft, working as a software engineer with, a, with Microsoft Corp and she has spent more than 14 years in the industry involved in various activities like development, solution architect, consulting and as a speaker. In Microsoft, she is part of the commercial software engineering team. She has delivered a keynote and talked in many conferences on various topics. For example, in uh, JSU 2020 and 2019, Azure Dev Conference 2020, Bitcoin and Blockchain Conference 2018, um, IoT Expo 2018, op op Open Source India Conference 2017, and more. Her certification includes TOGAF PMP, Six Sigma Certified, uh, she's uh, uh, Six Sigma Certified, uh, ECM Specialist, and she's an Azure Certified Architect. Uh, with that, uh, we, uh, we I hand it over to Renu, so she can take us to the uh, through the uh, presentation and uh, then we'll uh, we'll be taking various questions so you can send the questions in the chat and we will be answering the questions as we go both on the chat and uh, live uh, when we are doing the webinar uh, so over to you Renu. thanks for taking this webinar uh, thank you so much uh, vinayak uh, uh, so as when I said, I'm Renu, uh, so I'll share my screen. So today we are going to uh, learn about Power Platform. So uh, let me share my screen. So first we'll start with the presentation and after that uh, we'll have a demonstration. I hope my screen is uh, visible to everyone. Uh, yes, uh, we can we can see it, Renu. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's start uh, with today's session. Uh, so today uh, in agenda, we are going to first uh, know about what is Power Platform and what are the various uh, components that will be part of it. And then we will uh, talk about the business value. And after that, uh, we'll be having demonstration and few resources. So uh, just to give you a background, uh, so Microsoft, uh, we have bundle of cloud that you can see on the screen. One is uh, Microsoft 365, then we have LinkedIn that uh, most of you are using, then we have Dynamics. In Dynamics, we have ERP, CRM, and uh, they have many other modules related to specific industry or the specific uh, segment of industry or the department wise, you can say. And you already had gone through the webinars of uh, GitHub and Azure. Now we have another cloud that is Azure Microsoft uh, Power Platform. As its name signifies, it's a platform. It's not a uh, you know a single specific product. And then you can see on bottom we have this identity security management and compliance. This uh, uh, is a baseline for all the cloud that uh, we do have. And that's why um, you can see all the security and guidelines, compliance and GDPR, HIPAA, or whatever compliance standard that you say, uh, which we met across all the cloud within Microsoft. And then you, uh, the topic that we have uh, taken for today is Microsoft Power Platform, for which we are going to talk uh, about. So as I said, uh, its name signify it have a bundle of other components within it. And the main power of this particular platform is its low code platform. What does it mean to be low code? For example, if you need to build a uh, quick app, you need to create some dashboards or uh, you need to create some quick workflows, then this is a platform for you. You uh, during demonstration will see how uh, without writing a single line of code, you can create a full fledged application or you know, you can use this platform to create for your automate flows as well. Uh, so um, as I said, this is um, uh, more than a single solution. It's part of the robust platform that include Power Apps and Power BI. And you can see on the screen others like Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents. So these work together seamlessly so that your organization can only automate the uh, 
uh, your work very greater efficiency and also harness the data with more intellectual way. So that's why you can see this is the virtual agent in bottom. You can see this is the intelligent virtual agent. You can define your own models and you know. It's uh, you can create your chatbots. And uh, again, uh, since uh, uh, as I said, this is low code platform, so that's why you can easily create very quickly your application within low uh, given time frame or the cost. Uh, now at high level, if I would say uh, so in this platform, uh, we have Power BI and this is business alert analytics platform. We have Power Apps, Power Platform, uh, Virtual Agent and uh, and again, I would say this uh, is more than some of all these parts. Behind and under, under the layer, we have few other things like data words. We have AI builder. We have data connectors. And when uh, these work together, then you can connect your application with other Microsoft clouds. Like you can Azure, connect to Azure. You can connect to Dynamics 365. You can connect to uh, Office 365 and hundreds of other application that you have defined on your prem or those are exposed in REST API or you can create your own connector. So a lot of things that you can explore within Power uh, Platform. Uh, so together with this uh, Power Automate uh, uh, Power Platform, you can create low code or low code custom application and uh, through which you can collect or share the data. You can amplify uh, the approval process that you can have in your systems and you can uh, uh, I would say you just focus on uh, building your business logic apart from uh, rest how uh, you know this thing uh, will need to be developed and rest of the stuff let system handle it you just drag and drop most of the things will be done by the system. Uh, now uh, just a brief about each and every component like if we talk about power BI so most of the organization are using this for getting the business uh, analytics. So Power BI has a capability to connect to uh, multiple spaces and uh, you know uh, you can create your charts, dashboards and uh, you can uh, drill down further to the data and it has multiple connected to multiple sources. Now we have Power Apps. Uh, so uh, uh, Power App is basically you can create your own without writing code. So there are multiple type of app that you can create with Power Platform and then we have Power Automate. So it's a kind of you can think of workflow automation part. So if you need to define a cloud workflow, you need to define your business workflows. This is the component that you can target. Now we have another is the virtual agent. So uh, virtual uh, agent, uh, you can uh, think of the chatbot. And it's not only a single chatbot. It, there are so many things that you can do uh, with this. Uh, you can uh, create a lot of automation and uh, you can uh, uh, with virtual agent, uh, you can have your automated reply configured in the system. It's a kind of virtual agent for you. So new human interaction required and it, if required uh, the specific, uh, you know, chat or the automation piece can be transferred to the humans. And underlying to specify, uh, suffice these requirements, we have data connectors, AI builder, and data was this uh, work across with all these four components. Uh, now moving to next slide, let, let's see how does it work. So uh, as on the screen, you can see there are five major pieces. When these work together, then uh, you know your application will be up and running. One is your data. So uh, First component of an application is going to be a data layer where you are going to store the data. So Power Apps, they connect to various data sources. And uh, if uh, you see there is a data source that is required but is not present uh, as a connector, then you can expose your own API layer to uh, you know, transfer of the data to all the curved operations. Then we have one uh, specific uh, component that is Power App Studio. So this uh, specific tool we will be using to build our applications and uh, whatever you will see on the screen, you will be getting the similar kind of application. So uh, you must have heard this term. What you see is what you get W I E uh, W Y G. So it's the same thing. So what you will see on the screen while designing the application, it will be almost same. 
So the, we are going to use Power App Studio for that. And uh, now you have uh, data, you have created your app, and then how you can use this app. So there are word, uh, various ways. So while well, I will demonstrate to you, there you can see you can create your, uh, your app for uh, either uh, iOS, Android, or you can specify whether, uh, you know, which kind of layout it need to have. And also you can create a web app with this. So the app that you are going to create with the Power App Studio that you can run seamlessly on the browser itself. And uh, next thing is this. This is the basic requirement for creating an app. Now, uh, what other things that you can do? So we have um, various connections that you can uh, uh, interact with your app. So um, for this, uh, First, uh, there is some security guidelines that you need to follow. So you need to have specific permission on all. So you are going to first define those connection with all the security requirements. And then we have this Power Apps Cloud. So once you have built your apps, you have everything secure. Now you can publish your app in your organization so you can uh, access it anywhere. Uh, uh, let's talk about a few uh, values uh, that uh, you can drive from uh, the Power Platform application. So Power Platform application in short form that we say this is a PaaS. It's not like a platform as a service. This is Power Platform as a platform. And uh, so at high level, uh, it enable user to these five uh, top actions. You can quickly build your app. And then um, as we had this virtual agent, you can drive intelligent business processes and how you are going to automate those process. We have power automate for that to gain insight from data. We have power BI and these uh, things will work together. And if you need to talk to external system, then we have improper. So at high level, these are the main benefits. Uh, now. If we talk about each and every component one by one in detail, let's deep dive uh, in these. So one is like Power BI. So Power BI, you must have heard uh, this is a platform from where you can create your generate on uh, analysis of data and how you can do this using the charts. And it has various kind of chart that uh, you can use. It has various data sources through which you can uh, get insight of the data. So um, so this at high level, I would say this is a platform where you can consolidate all the data that you have in your organization or that you required for your business and you can view in a single pen of class. So if you want to create any kind of ad hoc analysis, it can have light dashboards. A simple example is, for example, if you need uh, if you are going to have um, a system which generate frequent alert might be some IoT. Uh, a specific device, for example, smart building solution or some other solution in which you need to monitor what's happening. If there is some issue, you need to get notified. You want to create live dashboard for that, then this is a tool for you. And how uh, you can, in, uh, so these reports you have created, you have published. If you want to consume these application, either if user using web browser or you want to uh, use these on mobile devices, that's also possible. On top of that, if uh, these applications need to uh, uh, send via some uh, these uh, dashboards or reports need to send uh, uh, to someone with periodic, for example, daily status meeting or daily consolidated uh, consolidated uh, sales data or revenue data of a year. You can use this uh, as an uh, automated uh, using scheduling so that person will get it notified as per the scheduled and uh, it will be uh, uh, sent in the mail or you know the, the person can view either on web or mobile devices. And uh, uh, this is uh, this help us to build a smart application uh, because you are getting insight of the data. You know what action need to be taken care. You can uh, take a proactive. Uh, if you have a strong analytic system in place, you can say OK from past analysis. What is going to what could be a future action using ML or AI and you can uh, drive an action uh, with the, the power of power platform. 
So uh, again, uh, you are going to build and consume this system. As I said, uh, you can use either web or mobile devices. And uh, this particular piece is for the Power Apps. So when you are going to create a Power Apps, in Power Apps, as I said, we have different layer. You have you are going to store the data. You have a middle layer in which you are going to define, uh, you know, how your uh, form will look like. And on top of once it is done, you, it is connected to data. You can view it at any place like web or mobile. The main thing is if you have multiple roles, I uh, and I know uh, in any kind of LOB or any application that you have. This application is not targeting only one specific set of user. You have multiple set of user and multiple roles defined in your system and each and every specific role has a different requirement in terms of few fields which are highly um, you know, sensitive data. For example, in a department uh, of HR, salary is uh, something which is not visible to everyone. If my salary can be visible to a certain set of people, uh, not to all in my organization. And apart from this, like my contact number, or uh, that is also a certain set of user who can access it. Yeah, but my name, what is my designation? It is accessible to each and every one. So in sim, same we have different roles uh, or RBAC policies that we have defined in each organization. So if we need to implement an application which will be used by all set of user, as I was taking, let's take an example of HR. So if you are going to build a simple HR application for storing the data and viewing the data, then we can define role based apps and uh, for each and every field we can define the securities. So this is the power of uh, the application that we are going to build with the power apps. And uh, uh, during uh, creation of this app, I'll show you you can uh, we have a different type of application that you can create. So model uh, uh, driven apps or the model apps, I would say if you have defined uh, your data models in advance and um, you want to create an app which uh, is directly communicating to data, but you want to spend less time on designing this application like saying which app, uh, which particular uh, field you need to uh, push here to define a submit button, click on submit button, it should save. You want to save all the time, then there is an application with name model driven app. You just specify which specific table or entity that you want to use. It will do everything for you. And uh, as uh, I said, uh, you can consume the application that you have built across the web, mobile, or it can be embedded into other platform. Like if you have created a uh, power app, you want to view this particular app into Teams. You can easily do that. You can create the app and integrate with the Teams. It will work seamlessly. In similar way, if you, you want to uh, embed this application to other platform uh, that you can also do. And you can view it from uh, many devices. So there are three type of applications uh, that you can build uh, uh, with a power platform. One, uh, one is Canvas app. Canvas app, uh, as name signify, uh, signifies, it's a canvas. So it's a blank canvas for you. So it's totally up to you what you want to design on it, where you want to put a header, where you want to put specific field on the same screen. If you want to have multiple charts, dashboards or a single screen with all the information, totally up to you. So that's why uh, this is a canvas app. It's totally blank. You need to define it. You need to, you can have your own style sheet. You can modify. You can create as per your requirement. Now we have model driven. So this is. Uh, a common data model, as I said, first you have defined your model. And then on top of that model or data, you want to define your application. You 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 hardly, uh, you know, uh, uh, spend some time on the UI designing part, then this is the application for you. So these uh, will uh, I will show you in a short while how we can make a model driven app. So first you are going to define your mod data and then uh, you are going to build on top of that. One thing is uh, this common data model. Now we are going to say this is data wars. We have re renamed this particular segment. And third is the websites. So this you can uh, think of any kind of uh, portals uh, that we generally create and this portal interact with the various sources. 
and uh, it also has some uh, uh, subsites in it it has top navigator breadcrumbs everything so that is also possible uh, with the power apps now uh, at a high level for canvas app it's totally going to be a custom ui and this will provide you uh, when you need to create a user friendly application so if you see most of the user of your application are going to be mobile user then i think uh, this should be your starting point and uh, uh, since you have overall control on the system of designing the ui which connector you are going to use which uh, tables entities uh, css or uh, you know different kind of javascript function if required you want to use so it's provide you flexibility that uh, that is required to build any kind of custom application with full of control and uh, only thing is if you are going to use this your data source must exist already it's not that like that you have already defined an app and later on you are going to build your uh, connector for connecting the data so first you need to define your data you build the connector to connect it if it is going to be an external data source if internal to power platform it's quite easy uh, to consume it but if you are going to use external data sources then first define and then uh, use here now model driven app so if you have uh, defined your data model and um, and then you want to create an app as i said less time on the development then this is the specific platform for you as name signify this is model driven so whatever data model that you have defined it is going to pull all the information from your data model and it will uh, render it on screen and it will auto populate few buttons and say okay uh, update delete or uh, save so at high level when you are going to define a model driven app what are the power component uh, that you would need one is entity entity you can think of a table so in which uh, you are going to uh, uh, save the data for example a table could be employee data another table tab another table could be uh, departments and third table could be uh, um, financial detail of an employee so these all are tables in uh, uh, earlier we used to say these are entities then any kind of uh, databases we have relationship defined between these tables in similar way here also we are going to have a relationship defined for the model driven apps uh, between all these uh, tables for example uh, for employee uh, it is going to have one to one relationship with the financial data of any person because one person salary is going to be credited into one space one person is tagged to uh, one department but in a department there can be multiple employees so there is going to be uh, you know one to n and to one kind of mapping that can exist and field of a uh, table that we say that uh, we name as attribute or the field of a table these are directly tagged to entities for a table we have uh, n number of uh, attributes for example employee table may be having first name last name might be my address right so and these field have different uh, data types like in database any field that you can define it can be number it can be a choice list or it can reference to another table in a similar way in uh, model driven apps or your canvas app in which if you are going to use these models so you can define your own uh, attributes and uh, these fields uh, on top of these field you are going to create your views as you generally create on tables at high level i would say uh, these core component you can think uh, as a database for you so like entity is a table then for each and every entity we are going to have attribute all entities are going to interact with each other or related to each other with a relationship and if you have predefined set of values for a specific field then it is going to be option set is it, it is a kind of drop down for example i have only uh, five department uh, for a specific application that need to be referenced so this is a drop down so we have option set for that so if you want to uh, get more detail then we have few blogs that you can refer so when to use which kind of application 
Now uh, there are few requirements when uh, you need to roll back. For example, if you are going to create an app, you have created multiple versions of it. Uh, but later requirement change or there's some uh, you know you want to again roll back to the previous version then uh, there is a uh, specific stage in which you can say okay restore this particular version so at high level what does it mean whenever you are going to create an app you are going to publish it it will create version of it and uh, that's how versioning is maintained uh, in power platform and whenever required you can easily restore now uh, it's a uh, term uh, this time is for uh, we have covered already canvas app we have covered model app, model driven app this is time for the portal so highly which kind of portal that you would like to design with a power app so these are few samples like uh, they are few templated that you can directly use. Just uh, select those. It will be having few predefined uh, uh, set of values. You just alter those and uh, system is ready for you. Like custom self-service portal, employer self-service portal, community portal or partner portal. These you can reuse these or if you want to create your own website in your own format, then uh, uh, there is a possibility to create a blank portal. And uh, within that also there uh, for each in a each portal we have multiple sub sites and we have multiple pages. So there are uh, few templates that you can directly use uh, to uh, quick start and uh, you know directly dump your data. Now it's a term another term that is automate power automate. Uh, in every organization, we have defined uh, business processes or you have multiple workflows that generally run. These can be your automated, these can be your manual trigger or these uh, can be uh, on trigger of a specific button. For example, when I uh, submit my travel request, my manager need to approve it, finance need to approve it. So when it will get triggered, when I click on a button or it can be uh, automated like whenever a new employee joined. So there are a number of email that need to be sent to various department to take care of the onboarding. So these are automated uh, mail or there can be scheduled mail. For example, every 15 minutes, every uh, once in a month, we need to send a mail to certain set of uh, users to send uh, a summary of the sales data. In similar way, they are uh, we uh, to define all these kind of automated uh, flow. We have power automate. So using that uh, you can automate and model your business processes and uh, these flow can you you can integrate with your apps or the other services. And uh, like other systems also uh, like for canvas app portals we have templates in similar way we have few templates for this as well that you can use as a baseline you can modify those and um, for each and every flow we generally specify what is going to be trigger point for that as i said it can be automated it can be scheduled it can be on button click in similar uh, that is going to be trigger point when we create a workflow it asks for us you want to get it scheduled or you know manual trigger or something else so when it is used, it is used to automate your legacy processes. Or uh, if you have a cloud based application or a few services in which you want to use it. Now, what are the type of flows that we have in Power Auto Power Platform or Power Automate? So we have high level these five flows Power Automate flow. As I said, uh, you want to perform one specific task automatically on trigger of a specific event as i said when a person is onboarded what does it mean if a data is inserted into specific table then we need to send mail to multiple people to take care of the onboarding in similar way button flows so it is uh, a kind of repetitive task uh, that you want to do from uh, anywhere anytime from your mobile device and then we have scheduled flow as i said sales report then we have business process flows 
it's a complete workflow in which on each and every stage you have created your own forms and uh, for each form you have already defined these are going to be mandatory field and each, in one particular form you have uh, four or five tables data displayed at same time so it's an actual true process which you design to care, take care of uh, any kind of business requirement. As I said, for my travel approval, uh, approvement, in my travel request uh, approval, I need to send a mail. So if I define a business process for that, so what will happen whenever I click on submit button for my travel request, it will pull the data, it will send uh, to second step, it could be my manager. He can review the data. He can put the comment then again click on submit. Now it could be multiple other stages like the third stage will be finance and fourth stage. I will be getting a mail back. So it is a set of forms for each and every uh, stage and on top you can see where is uh, your actual process. Yeah, which stage is your application? So that is your business process flows. And uh, one simple is approval flow that uh, can uh, be part of your business process flow or you can define just simple. If I click uh, on my travel request, uh, my managers, you will get notified using uh, flow and flow is having only two options accept or reject. That's it. And one thing is. Uh, these flows can be part of each other like in business uh, process flow. I can uh, call another flow. So these can be nested as per requirement. So uh, if you want to create a flow or an automate flow, what thing you need to have? One is you need to have a trigger point. You are going to set of action, define set of action that will take uh, taken care. For example, you need to send a mail. Uh, data is going to be published. And next, each and every flow there may be few condition. For example, if my manager rejects my travel request, then my flow should stop uh, at that point only. If my manager approve, then it will go to next stage. So there are certain number of uh, condition. Few uh, condition, a few is like if I have requested for first class travel, then there is separate uh, process that need to uh, be follow. If I requested for an economic class travel, then it's a separate flow. So there are certain number of uh, criteria that you can specify and based on that action need to be uh, uh, action will take place so that you can define in your flow. Now we have expressions so like you can uh, we have few predefined functions that you can use expressions uh, like parsing of the time and uh, substring numerical functions. So it's similar kind of function that you see on the excels. So those function you can directly use using the expressions. So one thing is you have defined the flow. What if it will get failed? So is there a way you can revoke? Uh, you can re-trigger it or how you will get notified. So what happens when uh, you have defined a flow? It got failed. Then there is an automated mail that is going to be sent to the owner of the flow saying this particular flow has uh, failed and uh, there will be few links that will say how you can uh, repair or what is the specific when you will see the history of the flow you can easily find okay why it got failed what are the specific values uh, because of which either it was fail or some exception a simple example of uh, failure of a flow could be when using flow i am going to uh, interact with a third party system and I'm using auth token. What if my auth token or the security configuration got failed? So might be uh, my access has been revoked or my uh, token has been expired or in that scenario, my flow will fail because my flow will not be interact with the defined set of step to the external system. In that scenario, my flow will fail. It will send a mailer when I will look in the history of the run there. I can see why it got failed. And then I take uh, here the necessary step. One is you can export it, you can rename it, you can share the specific flow with a multiple set of user. You can uh, say who can be owner of the flow. Everything is possible uh, uh, in terms of administration when you are going to use Power Automate. Now we have another uh, strong uh, area that is uh, you can build your virtual agent 
with power virtual agents. So for example, uh, you, uh, you have certain uh, a set of predefined questions that uh, need to be answered by your uh, L1 staff. So can you automate that? Because we have already predefined of questions that generally ask or top uh, uh, 30, 40 percent of the question. These are generally asked by the end users and what is their answers? We have already predefined. We have those in our knowledge basis. And so with virtual agents, you can have a power, uh, your chatbot created that can uh, take care of those uh, things by itself. In screenshot there, you can say, uh, on the on bottom, uh, there is yes, look up uh, the issue for me. So these kind of buttons, these can be pre-populated by the power virtual agents. So actually behind the screen, there is no uh, user which is there. It's the chatbot, but for the end user, your employee is going to interact with L1 staff, they will fill its actual user. And that's how whenever he will send a query based on the knowledge base, based on the predefined step, your virtual agent or your chatbot will reply. And main thing is uh, this virtual agent, you can connect to the hundreds of services and systems out of box. And within this, uh, as, I, uh, as on screen, we have multiple, multiple buttons. If user click on any of these button, then based on the workflow that is designed behind the screen, action will take place. And also history gets saved. If you want to deep dive, you can do. And also uh, it is behind the screen. It is using AI driven insight uh, to improve the bot performance. So this is, uh, you know, you know, a screenshot. Uh, how I would I will high level will say uh, this red orange line that you see on the screen. This is at which particular stage. Your application is or your workflow is and these like set up, trace, select, execute, close and award. These are the particular stages of your workflow. Uh, and uh, then on bottom you can see these are detailed stakeholder contributed idea. These are various entity and these are forms defined on those uh, entities or tables. So earlier, as I said, we used to say this is common data service uh, in which we are going to define this data. Now uh, we used to say this is data verse. So data verse is uh, uh, a kind of data model system for you uh, in which uh, you can extend it based on your need, uh, your own need, and you can integrate this with various application services. And one thing is, it's easy to integrate with ex other uh, cloud services uh, like Dynamics 365, Office 365, or if you need to integrate with the Azure, that you can do. Now, for common data service, what are the main thing? One is as uh, for uh, model driven app, we learned there are entities and each and every entity is hang going to have their attributes in the field. So that is part of the common data service. So underlying services, our common data service on top of that, we are going to build our power apps. Now, what are the benefit of it? As I said, in an application, if you have a requirement for the security, you need to implement role based security. Who can see what you need to implement uh, PII or other thing? Then uh, common data service provide this benefit. It's quite uh, easy to integrate with the other system. And also if you need to implement some logic and uh, validation, so that is also quite uh, possible using that. So at high level, I and uh, this is not restricted to six benefit, but uh, there are a number of other benefits as well. But high level, it's easy to manage the data, high security, and for Dynamic 365, uh, all the data models is defined in it. So if you need to build your custom map on top of that, you need to build your business process flows on that new flow, you can do that. And uh, it is uh, having rich number of metadata that I will show you in a while which kind of data types that you can use and how you easily can define the data type a relationship between various entities. And one is for productivity. Uh, if you want to import data from the Excel, you want to export data, 
from other uh, places as well, uh, there are a number of connectors through which you can uh, import and export the data. And core component, it's again entities, field and relationship that we have already talked about. Um, uh, and uh, now data connector, this, uh, uh, this is very important part. Why it is important, this is a connector uh, that is going to be used in your multiple uh, stages or multiple component of the power platform like in power automate you can use data connectors in power apps in logic apps wherever you want to use it these are uh, i would say it's a gateway if uh, for your application to the external data sources which is not part of uh, data wars so advantage of uh, this uh, is for example if you are in you, you need to interact uh, a data which is not in SR or uh, it can be on Google or it can be on AWS, but you want to define your UI or using Power Platform. So you can easily expose your data connector, define your custom connector and you expose this and uh, um, uh, then when you are going to expose it, you must be having a uh, Postman collection for that because when you are going to test it with a postman, just get that collection, configure this in Power Platform. It will be up and running uh, within minutes. And then once you have these custom connectors defined, now either uh, if it is required uh, in the business uh, Canvas app or a business process flow, or it need to interact with the Power Automate, just directly go to the specific area and uh, integrate that. So there are two type of uh, connectors that we have. One is tabular. So these tabular uh, data sources are the data source which return data into structure table format. So during demonstration, I'll create a table in the data verse and then we'll see how my connector will automatically pull data into tabular form. And if I need to uh, update it or I need to list it, it's quite easy. Then we have function based. So these function data, uh, function based data sources are uh, that use function to interact with the data source. And uh, uh, these function can be your uh, uh, either custom defined or it can be like plus, minus, or upper, lower, these kind of functions. So these are also kind of connector. You can define your own connector if you need to format some. For example, if you need to format the address uh, for each and every employee, how it will display. So uh, that's a connector. You define your own instead of tabular format, you just uh, return as a JSON. In JSON, you just pick each and every value and see how you want to get a display on the screen in Power Apps. So what are the various component uh, that uh, will be a component? One is it's going to be uh, have a trigger. So internally it will say, okay, this trigger has prompted then let's begin the flow and on uh, once that connector will get triggered so behind the screen it will connect your data source it will do some uh, uh, implement some function or uh, trigger those function and then it, it will return a value so high level trigger and action will happen in each and every connector so now uh, uh, i think uh, we can quickly jump to a demonstration uh, I'll show you how you uh, how uh, the environment looks like. So, uh, one second. Let me. So, this portal, this make dot preview dot power apps dot form. This is your centralized portal uh, through which you are going to admin uh, the overall environment. You are going to create the apps. You are going to create the flows. And there on the right side, you can see uh, the options that is available. But before that, uh, jumping to this, what are the various ways or how you can get a trial instance created? That's the first thing. For that, uh, let me uh, uh, show you one. So this is our documentation uh, on Microsoft.com portal. 
and uh, this specific segment is specify how you can get a trial instance. So if you want to have user and admin, then you can create this, this, this. So let me uh, take this one. I want to create a uh, trial instance. I need to have uh, user as well as admin permission. So I will go to the site and uh, if uh, you I want to use the Dynamics app that I can also do it from here, but this is not scope of uh, this webinar. So I'll, uh, I will not touch that point. So how you can do it in bottom, you have an option. Uh, you can sign on behalf of a user or trial for development purpose. I click on sign up and say sign in. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll click on sign up. Uh, I will say no continue signing up and then it will land me to a page. It will ask for my email ID. It will ask for the basic requirement. So first name and all. And then uh, when I click on submit, it will create an environment for me. So I will say this is because this is my organization ID. I already have an account, so it is saying me. You want to use that? Meanwhile, it's signing out. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll go back. Uh, I'll show you one uh, other easy way as well, like sign in. Because mine was corporate, so there will be certain set of action that I need to take care. Before that, uh, if uh, you are not, uh, uh, if you are going to use it for PUC kind of purpose, first this screen will render in which you just specify these basic details. You can have a trial instance up and running maximum 90 days. Minimum days are two. And after 90, uh, 90 days, this uh, environment uh, will be deprovisioned. And here you need to provide your email ID. And uh, I will say just others. And on click of next, it will provision one trial instance for me. But in my case, it's not, not possible because I already logged in with my corporate card, uh, my corporate email ID. So I already have an instance. But once you fill this form, it will uh, create an instance for you. And uh, that will be by default as, a, as I selected two days. So it will be valid for two days. Then I will get a mailer. And uh, if I don't extend my trial period, it will automatically expire in a couple of days. Otherwise, by max 90 days, you can use this instance. And uh, once uh, you send this request, you have your environment up and running. You will be having uh, a a URL in which you will uh, uh, you can log in or you can directly make dot preview dot power apps dot com and if you are going to use multiple environment then you can choose and uh, select which are environment which environment you want to use it so this is the place for your control now so as I said when you need to create an app so first thing you need to have the data so if I go to data there I have multiple tables and these tables, when I, I create this instance that I said, okay, just create few uh, out of box table for me. So, and these tables that you can see, these are uh, few uh, pre populated tables. I, but I am going to go ahead and create my new table. I will say demo employee. Okay, before, uh, yeah, now I go on and say, Create. There you can see this name is by default coming as CR this. But as a best practice, I never suggest you can uh, you know use this. If you don't want to use this default setting, then uh, what you can do is first you create a solution. So a solution you can think of. Uh, it's a bundle in which you put each and everything. For example, I'm going to create a table. So I go uh, uh, and uh, on top of that uh, table, I'm going to have few flows and also I'm going to have few apps, but I want to segment that uh, this for a specific department the solution. So I will create that solution and I will link all the apps, all the tables, all the flows to this particular solution. So let me uh, 
create a solution first. I will say HR department. Okay. So these are the, I need to create a publisher. So uh, this is again not a mandatory step. If you are not going to create a solution, it will automatically create one for you. But I would suggest this is a best practice. Just go ahead and create uh, a solution for you. And I will say publisher is HR. And for prefix, earlier you could see there was CR and then some run, random number. Here I would say prefix should be HR. B -B -B for each and everything that I'm going to create for this solution. So then I can say save and close. Done. It will take a while to get it reflect here. I will say HR department. And I will create. Okay, now I have a chat department. I'll create a new table in this solution. I will add a table. And I will name this as demo employee. And uh, sorry about my network issue today. So I will say this is demo employee. And then now you can see name has changed. So this signify this particular table is tagged to my solution. And I'm going to create it. And I will uh, add a new column. In this column, uh, I will say, okay, what is my department? So I will name this column as department. And uh, the different type of uh, fields that we were talking about, data types specific, you can see here. So for text, we have these. For whole number, we have these. Data, uh, date time, we have choice list, currency, yes, no, multi-line. So what's the significance of these, uh, selecting these is based on the data type. For example, if I'm going to say, I need to have yes or no. When I will create the form, it will automatically tag this kind of, uh, based on the data type, it will render a control for me. So. Uh, I will uh, keep this as text only. I can say this is uh, searchable or not if you are going to implement advanced search uh, in your application. And this is optional, recommended, required. I'm saying this is optional for me. Okay, now you can see this bold one is, which is uh, like department, I have created this. Rest of these values are created by system itself. And uh, these are required for the uh, maintenance purpose or sometime, you know, auditing history or compliance point of view for most of the organization. I'm going to click on save now. And uh, it will save a table for me. By default, it is uh, having only two fields. One is name, another is department. Now, uh, I have a table. Let me create an app. I will go to apps. I will create a uh, let's create first and model driven app. So it will ask for a name. I'll say uh, model employee. And uh, there are a few other options if you want to have a welcome page or uh, uh, a few more things, but again, you see this is the unique name again. It is not tagged to my solution. So uh, I need to first this tag to my solution. So I will leave this. I will go to my solution. Or from there also, uh, there was an option through which I could directly tag to this particular solution. There was an option where I could select this. So I will say, I will say model app. Okay, so now this is a third department. I will say uh, name is the model employee. And I'll say done. Okay, 
now it's a default view. As of now, it's, you know, this does not as any kind of entity. What I can have in this particular uh, model app, these are the artifacts which I can use. I can, um, so I have created a table, so I will use an entity. Entity is a table. So I will search mine. So that, wow. This one, I have added that. Now, when I will click on save, it will show me an error here. Configuration missing. It will not be able to validate. One error. And what's that? One is app does not contain a app site. I will modify this. And I will say, OK. Uh, I can have an area in which I'm going to use my entity that is my Department employee. This is uh, uh, the main area for me, or of this app is for all the employees who are part of this department. I click on save. And when I will go back to my app designer, now this error has gone. I click on again save. Now I'm going to validate this again. One warning. Why? Uh, because it does not reference a form or view. We'll have a look into a while, but before that I want to publish this and let's see how my application looks like. Can I push data into my uh, table using this UI interface? I will play. Yeah. This is up and running. I have uh, this blank screen in which because I have no, I have just created my table. There is no data. I can create any report for me. I'll say new uh, employee. We know. I'll click on save. But here you see it has only two things. One is name. Another is honor. We had added one more field that name bus department. It's not there. I'll show you why it is not there. I have click on save. I close this instance. I will also close this. And when uh, I will go back to my table. So this is my table. I will go back. In data, you must see there is one data which is created uh, and uh, in that I had put my name. So name you can see this is Renu, but again there is no department. In general uh, database management system, how we can view the data using views. Same is applicable here as well. So there is a view that is uh, used while designing the default form. So that is our public view so that you can use uh, everywhere. So. So this was the view. If I click on this, that is by default used in our uh, model driven app. There you can see there is only two values name and created on. I will drag this as well. Or I will add department here. I will uh, save it. I will publish this. So once it is published, there uh, when I will be going to have view of my data. Now I can see these three name created on and department. I will go back to my solution. And I'm going to have a look at the data. Yeah, now we have another field. So if I'll go back to my application, uh, this is a uh, third department solution in that I had this my application. I'm going to edit it. 
Okay. Now we have uh, these four things. One is form, view, chart, and dashboard. So I will change the view. So I had uh, modified this active employee, although if I wish to use, I could create a new one as well. So I'm going to use this and I will click on save. So again, validate. And if I'm going to publish this. And I can click. So now. Uh, okay. Look, yeah, now you can see there is another uh, field with department. I will if I, I I have an option to edit the record. I will. Uh, I will go back. New. Looks like I uh, have not published that properly. So in view I could see yeah. one thing is in view I can see, but uh, it is not on the form. So what I will do, I will go back. To my table. And there I. Uh, on the screen that you see when I click on this, this is a form. So what I will do in my app uh, in my table, there is form. So I will click on main form. I'm going to edit it or I can create my another form. So but for meanwhile. Uh, I will edit this form. And here also in similar way in view I had added that in form I will also modify those. So I will add the in journal. Uh, I can see we have name and honor. I need to add one more field. So what I will do. Uh, I am going to add one more component that is table component and. Uh, these are the list of values that populate by default. I will add department. So department has been added. I will click on save. And I'll publish it in my uh, app. Now I can tag this form as well. Okay, so now uh, it is done. I'll go back. One sec. Got stuck between the screen. One second. Yes. Okay. So uh, I will close this. I will go to my app designer in forms. Now uh, uh, I had modified that made the main form. So I don't think so. I need to tag that again. One second. I'm going to refresh my application. I have this department. Now you can see department as a new field in the form as well. So I had not. Uh, Created these saves, active, not active, assign these kind of button. This is automatically created for me. So uh, this is the simplest example. And if you want to create uh, or attach few flows with that, so this is the place you can run reports. You can convert this to as a template if you wish to use. So uh, this is all about the model driven application. So I just define my model and based on that I have created an app. What about if I want to create a blank app for my mobile devices or I want to create a fancy UI? So what I will do, I will go back to uh, my apps. Uh, in uh, I can OK from here. I'll show you. I will create an app. I'll create a canvas app this time. Because when I will create a canvas app, it will give me full flexibility how I want to render this. So there are a few predefined templates which I can use or you just uh, see you want to publish this app for a phone or a tablet, which kind of layout you want to use. I'll just say I want to have this in phone layout and I'll quickly show how you can attach that table at this place. So I will create a form. And in this form, I'm going to 
connect to my data. By default, in data source, I can see all the entities or the tables which is defined in my current environment. I want to put a filter, so I will go to right side, left side, and there I will search for my table. And so this is my table. So this is I'm going to use in this application. So now when I will go back to my form, I can easily get this. And again, since I had added the department in my default view, you can see it has been created. Now this form has been designed. If you want to put a background image, if you want to change format, text, everything is everything that you can change from here. For example, department border is, is in this color. Or I want to uh, change whether it is it, it should be visible or not. It should be out of it or not. Those kind of uh, uh, things I can uh, do it from here. Now I want to save the data on a button click. So we have few controls like this is the by default structure. I will insert a button. I will put a button here and. We have one function on cell on uh, uh, which will trigger on select that is submit form and which form I need to submit that is uh, going to buy my form one, which is which I had created. So that so once I save this application, I can test it because I don't have any pre-populated data, so it is blank. One second. OK. So. Uh, this is uh, as I said earlier, what you see is what you get. So this is the UI which I had rendered and you know when I click on that, I have not filled any value and this is a star. It's a mandatory value. That's why this validation is already sent by the system. An entry is required or an invalid value is required because I had clicked on the submit button. When I clicked on the submit button, it was trying to push these blank value into the system. That's why that send an error message and uh, once I'm done with all the UI changes, everything I will say I go to save. And uh, I want if I want to share this with multiple users, I can share and also if I want to uh, make this uh, application to be part of a flow or I want to tag this to a particular flow, I can directly go to flows and make this happen. OK, this is uh, all about uh, the. Uh, not all about, I would say this is high level overview of uh, this canvas uh, canvas app. And model driven app, although uh, each and every component here is. Uh, is require a lot of details that I think we can cover in subsequent webinars. And uh, another thing that I would like to touch upon in quickly uh, four or five minutes is flows. As I said, you can create multiple flows. And uh, so there were different type of flows. So I will create an automate flow for you. And uh, one thing that we learned about is that it need to have a trigger. So that's why in starting it is looking for what trigger you want to have this particular flow because you are going to see this is an automatic cloud flow. So flow name I will say. Um, I will say employ. The trigger I'm going to say when I'm going to insert data into that specific table. So that table was uh, my department employee. If data will be getting inserted into this, then a mail should be triggered. So I'm going to just click on create. And what is the trigger condition? So I will say this is going to be create. Otherwise, you can see there are multiple options. Even you can say, OK, if designation is this, then it should trigger or record is deleted, updated. So everything is possible. So I will just click on create. I will say my entity that is. Department employee and the scope is user. And. I'm going to add the next step that is email. So. So there are multiple uh, 
the different versions of sending the mail if you want to directly use the uh, office 365 outlook these are the connectors and uh, if you want to uh, define your own custom that uh, also possible you just select and that if you want to simply use smtp or you know gmail so these are pre-populated uh, that you can directly use or again i said you can create your own as well i'll say send an mail although i'm saying this workflow will not work reason being uh, we ha i have not defined this uh, the security policy which i have implemented on this environment is quite stringent so that's why with this environment i can't say send any mail to anyone but uh, i'll give you a brief how and i'll show you how template will look like so uh I'll, whom mail need to be sent and what is going to be subject of the mail new employee on boarded and uh, body is hello one with name uh, there you can see this is the dynamic content from where it is coming when a record is created or updated so this is that step from there it is automatically pulling the data i'll say name so hello when someone with name this hello someone with name this join your org and i'll click on save so that's how uh, but as i said it will not run because i have a strict policy defined on my environment so that's you can see dlp i can't send uh, any mail with this but i'll show you if it will run uh, i have one more environment through which i will demonstrate to you one second how does it generally looks like when uh, you trigger a workflow one second And uh, in that, I will also show you the history of the workflow and uh, what else uh, that we need. Okay. Hi Renu, uh, this is Vinayak. Just uh, just a time check. Uh, we are a little over, uh, uh, you know, one hour. So I, uh, if is this going to be the last demo uh, while we wrap up? Yes, this is the last. And I think uh, uh, just a minute. I just show how does it look, and uh, we are going to close the demo part. Sure, sure. And then and then we'll take the questions if any from yes. the audience as well. Yeah. 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 Okay, this is uh, can you see uh, if you can confirm? Okay, uh, so this is the history. Uh, and uh, when is workflow run and you know when I click on this it will show me all the steps that were part of that flow and uh, if it got failed even it will give me uh, the detail of that so this is one sample flow you can see i had applied the uh, rules as well in this okay uh, that's it from my side now, now we are good to take uh, all questions thanks thanks you know uh, that was actually really good because you know, uh, we didn't quite a deep dive into the different components, the different connectors, uh, as well as the triggers, right? So it it shows how the flexibility of the uh, different tools, uh, you know, for building apps and, uh, you know, even internally also, we have built many apps for doing a day-to-day -day work. So it actually saves a lot of tedious work that, you know, uh, that we have to do on a daily basis. So I feel that the platform is really, really powerful. And we've seen also in the field, like, you know, in healthcare, in retail and various other industries, uh, you know, people have used this platform for uh, building apps very quickly. Uh, you, even people who cannot code code really well, but, you know, understand the basics in terms of data models. So I think the the uh, designer and uh, paradigm is pretty popular uh, pow and powerful for building apps. So let me just go over and, uh, you know, check uh, if we have any questions. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, for the audience, if you have any questions, I think this is the right time to actually, uh, you know, post them. 
and uh, you know we can ask uh, Renu any questions if you have. So I'll just wait for a uh, you know a, a minute or so uh, 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 you know while while we wait for questions. So you can talk about maybe any use cases or any connectors that you you can use. So uh, you have worked with a lot of customers. Any interesting use cases that uh, you have seen? You know, uh, with, with Power Platform, you know, I'll wait for questions. Maybe we can quickly cover that. Mm, yes, yes. One. Uh, no very uh, really a uh, use case even that is published as a template as well is uh, execs they have very less time to go through each and every mails for a specific account if we, they need to go for any meeting with CIO or CTO right so can we design a simple one pager or two pager power apps in which it will capture the meeting notes that uh, our execs CEO CTO they can refer while talking to customer and on same page can we have all the relative stakeholders details like who is account manager who is what so that is a kind of meeting notes and uh, this particular uh, template is also published as a template that uh, you know if required i can send this on chat so we can we to have uh, this and gallery as a template gallery there you can see number of use cases and these are very high demand in high demand just drop the just export those and import in your environment and it's ready to use cool the other use case i found which was really popular is uh you know during the vaccination drives uh to find get all of the details right so i've seen in the us for example and not just the us in, even in other countries uh they built the, uh you know just get all of the details of the um of the patient and uh, then they used to you know do various validation especially this is important because the vaccine is two dose right so if the person has to come back again right so it has to connect to the database make sure you know that person gets a notification uh, make sure that you know he meet he or she meets the criteria in terms of uh, uh, you know the age or you know being a healthcare worker so all of these checks all of the data collection all of the notification actually all of this has been built into a power app uh, really powerful across the US and also in other countries we have seen so especially we have seen that hospitals have used this uh, very well um, where uh, where you know they do not have a lot of technical expertise but they can they do understand the workflows uh, that is that is where the focus of the tool is on the workflows as well um, so I don't think we have a lot of questions only I think one uh, uh, inquiry we have is uh, can you share the webinar link uh, because you know uh, people might want to see this again yes i think uh, you can act, uh, the webinar will be available on demand so you can point any people who want to look at the webinar you know post so this was live but it, the recording will be available uh, in a few hours and uh, you know people can sign up on the link and watch this on demand we'll also be publishing this on the youtube channel and we'll be sending a link to all of the participants as well as people who are in the highway 200 program so I hope you found this useful. So uh, I think, uh, you know, even if you want to, uh, especially for startups, uh, you know, if, if you want to do a quick MVP or uh, for, you know, uh, any kind of data entry, for example, say e-commerce or uh, uh, retail or any other use cases that you have and you want to kind of publish something uh, out there or even Power BI for, you know, uh, 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 we didn't cover that in very much detail, but Power BI also for doing some of the analysis both exploratory and both building dashboards uh, I, I, I think that would be that would be really uh, you know powerful cool I think uh, uh, I think this was very informative uh, 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 with that I think I would like to thank uh, Renu uh, and uh, for, for this excellent uh, webinar uh, and uh, as as multiple people said it will be available for being afterwards as well so people who could not make this time can watch it you know by registering as well as we'll have it on youtube as well so thank you very much thanks you know yeah thank you so much for having me thanks bye have a good bye. day everyone